So hi everyone, today we have a special guest on our channel. We have Nikhil with us. So Nikhil, would you like to introduce yourself once? Yeah, so I'm Nikhil Dikshit and I'm originally from Agra and I've done my B.Tech in Computer Science from IIIT Gwalior and I'm currently working as a uh, SDE at Grow and uh, apart from that, I also like problem solving. I'm an expert on code force and guardian on lead code. I'm also ranked in top 300 coders all over India on lead code. Mm-hmm. Amazing, amazing. So as you guys can see, he has great problem solving credentials, being a guardian on lead code, the top rating, and being an expert on code forces, which is not an easy thing to do. So I'll be talking about his entire problem solving journey, his interview experience at Grow, and his entire journey of you know improving in problem solving and eventually ending up in cracking Grow. So Nikhil, before we get into your DSA journey, can you talk a bit about the interview experience at Grow? Like what all happened? What type of problems did they ask? Yeah, so the, there was like round one. So in the like round one, like I was initially asked a puzzle and uh, the, it was an easy puzzle. Where, but what we can do in that puzzle is basically is we can see the, all the possibilities and then we have to like eliminate the, the things and then there would only be one left. And uh, apart from that, there were two DSA questions. One was a bit of uh, uh, implementation, but, the, but it was of implementation which uh, basically if I talk about the question, uh, it was, you, you know, uh, it, it is not a straightforward DSA question, which you will get on like the lead core and stand, standard stuff. Uh, basically we have to Google it the way. And then by seeing, by, by seeing the, uh, like we have to share the screen and then we have to Google the stuff, which, re- which is required to solve that problem because the interviewer were expecting us also to yet, you have to Google and see the implementation and then you have to implement in the code on the go. And uh, the next question was relatively, uh, I would say a straightforward sliding window question. And uh, in the round two of the interview, basically uh, it was a hiring manager round and uh, there was a discussion on projects and uh, what are challenges I faced on why I picked up the technologies, right? And, uh, and live demo of the projects and hmm. Mm-hmm. Understood, understood. So in the first round, the first DSA problem that you mentioned for which you were allowed to Google, was it related to a particular algorithm or like what was it about? If you can explain a bit more about that question. Uh, it was about, uh, you know, uh, a day, uh, you know, uh, I will like just uh, tell you the day, month and year and I would tell you whether it's Sunday, Monday, Tuesday or like that. Hmm. Okay, 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 okay. Got yeah. it, got it, got it. And you were allowed to Google for like searching up implementations and all. Yes, yes. But I have to share the, my screen. <laughs> you cannot <laughs> use yeah. GPT, right? Yes, By being yes. sneaky, of course. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. The, recruiter, the interview will be looking at you. All right, great. So now we're done with the interview experience. Let's jump, let's just jump straight into your DSA journey because, of course, you have a very impressive coding profile both on code forces and on lead code you're a guardian meaning you're able to perform consistently well in lead code contest right so let's talk about your dsa journey first i want to ask about how did you start your dsa journey you know how did you get into dsa and you know improve upon it basically so uh, in my first year of the college i was introduced by the you know college coding club to like uh, you can pick any language and like uh, uh, you should start with doing with dsa and it will help later on in interviews and stuff so I started with it and I started doing lead code as well. Uh, but what I, but, uh, uh, what I was able to see is that I was not able to solve new problems. I was just st- like, uh, I was just doing the Stiver A to Z sheet, but the thing is that I was not able to solve new questions. So for that reason, I switched to then competitive programming. So in competitive programming, how did you improve upon it? Because a lot of people start competitive programming, let's say even code forces, for example, they start it, but a lot of people are stuck at a newbie level, a pupil level, and they're not able to get to the higher level. Same in lead code, right? A lot of people start it, but they're only stuck to the range of easy or easy media problems. They're not able to get above that, right? So how did you improve on it, basically? So like, uh, basically we have to like do the offline practice as well, apart, give, apart from like giving the live contest and absolving it, you should also like do the offline practice rating wise. I did rating wise practice of the questions. And when I, once I get, I got comfortable with a specific rating, then I jumped on the, like the higher rating and, uh, and also have a good peer group as well to discuss problems, to discuss new approaches that really helps. Mm-hmm. Correct, correct, correct. Having a friend group who have having the same goal as you and are practicing together, 
it not only helps in improving in DSA, but it helps in basically making DSA more interesting for you, right? So what was your practice strategy like? Was it like starting with contests or did you follow a sheet? Did you do pattern-wise solving? What was your practice strategy? I generally do random problem solving, no topic wise, because I was already good in like topic wise problem solving. But when I am not aware of which topic to use, then I, at, I was having some problems. So I did only random problem solving and contest. Contest is itself a random problem solving, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Correct, correct, correct. So you didn't follow any particular sheet no. for your DSA journey? No. Initially, I followed the Stiver sheet. But uh, I was not mm. I was not very comfortable in solving new problems. So after that, I didn't follow any mm. sheet. Mm. Correct, correct, correct. And the problem that you mentioned about solving new problems, right? So if we talk about even from a lead code sense, because most of the interview questions will be in a lead code setting, right? Like according to the lead code contest, or according to the problems that people solve on lead code. So this is a struggle that majority of the people face, right? Whenever a new problem comes, they're not able to solve it. Or whenever a hard problem comes, they're not able to solve it. So how did you manage to get the comfort of solving new problems? That any new problem is coming, if it's medium or even medium hard, you're able to solve it. What do is that, uh, you know, we have like in a month, there are 30 days, right? And even if I pick mm -hmm. two problems a day, two good problems, so 60 problems a day, which are like relatively very tough and, uh, you know, they teach you a lot so i only have to aim like one to two problems a day and i used to like think about it. i didn't used to see the solution i just used to think about this one to two problems in a day uh, what i used to do is that when i go to when i was going to my first class in the college i used to read the problem and i used to think that in in the in the college in the when the class was going on <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah yeah i remember having the same thing you know like there would be a contest the day before and then you'd be imagining how you'd solve it. That is why contests are so important and that is why having a peer group is so important. Because when you keep discussing these things, right, the more your intuition increases, the more your logic building uh, increases, right? The more you think about it, basically, the better you're going to get at it, right? All right. And any uh, tip for the pattern recognition thing? Because, of course, if we look at it at layman's term, DSA is nothing but a bunch of patterns, right? And a lot of people are not able to recognize the pattern, that whether it is like I, this algorithm or that algorithm. So how did you improve in the pattern recognition? Ki, okay, this is a problem and within five to 10 minutes, you're able to figure out ki, it's a sliding window problem or it's a DP problem or it's a, a whatever problem it is, right? So the thing is like the same itself, right? You have to do random problem solving because once you do random problem solving, you will get to a like procedure like, okay, uh, if these are there, then this will not work, this will not work. Like that is ultimately a practice itself. Like, right. And I also like when you like, you know, you spend so much time on a problem, let's say I used to like spend two, three hours minimum on a problem. If, if even if I, even, uh, if I, even if I'm not getting it, I used to spend minimum to like two to three hours. Right. Also like, uh, so what it does is in those two to three hours, you are, you know, building that muscle memory. Okay. This will not work here. This will not work here. Right. Because you're consistently thinking of approaches and eliminating them like right, line by line. So, you know, it will, it will really help in the real like interview stages as well. Hmm. Correct. 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 Basically, the more, basically, the more time you spend on a problem, the more you learn from it, right? The more you think about it, the better. Again, your problem solving is going to get from it, right? So yeah, that's pretty much a great way of improving on uh, DSA, right? So we've talked about your DSA journey in depth, right? So for all the people who are watching this video who also want to crack a company like Grow or any other good company, what advice would you like to give them? So what I would recommend is basically, you know, have a balance between the problem solving and the development part and uh, do it wholeheartedly, whatever you want to do. And uh, just because ultimately you do, pro you know, both are going to help you and uh, don't fall into like the debate with that DSA versus dev, do, do both DSA and dev and have a balance between the two because as you can see that, uh, the, you know, the DSA was the initial round, but uh, uh, in the hiring manager rounds, you know, generally it is project discussions, right? So you have to have a balance between the two. Mm -hmm. Correct, correct, correct. So that's some great advice right there. And apart from this, if anyone of you want to connect with Nikhil or you want to ask him anything or learn from him, then I'll give his LinkedIn in the description box. You guys can connect with him from there and follow him from there. So thanks a lot, Nikhil, for coming on the channel and sharing your journey and all of these wonderful tips. I really hope this will help a lot of students. So yeah, thank you so much for joining. Yeah, thank you.